Hello, I'm Cliff. And I'm Linda. We're both pastors of the Woodville Assembly of God Church, Woodville, California. And thank you for allowing us to come into your homes today. I'm Cliff. And I'm Linda. Pastors of the Woodville Assembly of God Church. Thank you for allowing us to coming into your home today. Uh, Linda's going to be teaching out of the book of James today, so take it away, hon. All righty, let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Father, we're thankful for your word. Yes, we know Lord. that the entrance of your word into our hearts gives life to us. Help us as we study this book of James together that we can grow by his word into our hearts. We'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. James chapter 4, 7 through 10. We're going to finish up our two parts tonight. Chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Now, we have been studying this book for the last few months in our church, but we learned last week from this teaching that there are four points that James is dealing with, with temptation. Temptation is the constant experience of men and women. Every sin that is preceded by temptation. Temp what do I mean by that? Temptation comes and then comes sin. Therefore, if we can figure out how to overcome our temptations, we can keep ourselves from sinning against God and ourselves. The answer to conquering the sin is to conquer that temptation. We learned last week that step one is very easy for us to submit to God and resist the devil. They both have to be put into action. They work in conjunction with one another. You submit to God and you resist the enemy. Also, we learn that you, you can't listen to the enemy's tempting offer, not even for a moment. Sometimes the presentation that he makes or temptation that he makes to you will sound pretty good. Don't even listen to that. If you do, and you start picturing that temptation, it moves you just a little bit more toward it, and then you begin to fall for his lies. In other words, you listen to him. It begin to entertain the thought. Yes. Every time the enemy attacks, we have to submit to God and his word, and we have to resist the devil. Step two was to draw near to God and then repent. Remember what I shared with you, we have access to God anytime, but I wanna teach you something. It's conditional. There are people who God doesn't allow to draw near him. Now, who would that be? The scripture says the person with unclean, sinful hands and an impure, wavering heart. You cannot have a divided loyalty between God and the world. Too many people today think that they can. We used to call it straddling the fence. Yes. You actually have one foot with the Lord, and then you have one foot in the world. God doesn't allow a divided loyalty. Now, when we're talking about being in the world, we're actually talking about not being obedient to the word of God. Right. And like a non-believer right he demands our total allegiance he wants our whole heart a person who is double-minded or who tries now this is what double-minded in this case means a person who tries to follow god some of the time and the world at other times there's where you're double-minded you cannot draw near god don't take it out of context you're trying to get near him when this temptation is coming upon you you have to purify your heart or what does that mean to purify your heart turn your heart completely toward god and the lord jesus christ 
You have to repent. Turn away from sin and draw near God. We cannot continue to sin and walk in and turn ourselves toward God. We must repent of that sin, whatever it is, and then you draw near him. When we say repent, re the word repent means to turn around. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually to be sorry for what you've done, and then you turn around and go the other way. Completely opposite the way that you are going. Now, tonight, we're, today, we're going to do step number three. It says, be enduring and deeply and mournfully concerned. You see that? It said wail. The scripture used that word, wail and right. cry. That word for it means being afflicted. It means to endure toils. In the King James, it says lament, mourn, and weep. Right. Okay. In the NIV, it's a little different. And but now I want you to understand something here. You you have can't don't take this out of context. James is uh, don't take his passage as something that he doesn't mean. By the way, he's not denying the joy of the Christian life right here. He's not demanding that we live a gloomy life filled in a dark and shadowy world. He's actually talking to a specific people who are in love with the world. Right. And he's pleading with them not to make luxury and comfort the standards by which they judge all of life. Too many times when everything is going well for us, we like to think, well, everything's a piece of cake. But this is not what he's talking, he's talking about here. Don't make that by which you judge everything about life. You know, it's, it's, it's very strange that... Prosperity seems to be the worst thing for God's people. Yes. Because when everything's going well, they actually turn away from God and, and forget God. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like they brought this prosperity on themselves, mm -hmm. which we know it is not true because he's the way, the truth, and the life. And without him, we can't do anything else. Every good gift comes from him. That's right. And so we need to acknowledge that and realize that we don't bring prosperity. God no. brings prosperity into our lives. James was talking here. He knew that it was discipline that produced fruit in people's lives, not being frivolous all the time. And he also knew that it was wise abstinence, which produces the Christian who knows how to use the world and its gifts right. I like what Paul said, all things are lawful to me, but they're not always expedient. Right. That some things are just not good for us. They're not necessarily wrong, but they're just not healthy for us. He demands that we should mourn, that our laughter should be turned to sorrow and our joy to gloom. When you're being tempted, what he's actually saying is this is not a time for you to be laughing and full of uh, frivolity and laughing and joy and happiness. He's actually describing something. If you stop and you really think about it, it's the first step of the Christian life. Our Christian life began when we were confronted with God in our own sin. Right. I'm asking a question to you today. Do you remember when you first accepted Jesus as your Savior? Most of you can think back to that time. You felt sorry over your sins, remember? But eventually, you also felt something else. You felt joy that God was forgiving you of those sins, correct? That's right. You see, I think that's, that's what he's trying to get across to us, that we need to pay attention to those temptations and us falling for them. Because most of the time when we're tempted and we don't pass the test, what is it you feel? Sorrow. You feel sorrow. You know, there's a scripture in Isaiah. I can't quote where it, it's at exactly right now. But it says, there will come a day and a time when you will loathe yourself for the sins that you've committed in the past. You know, the older I get, the more I realize that the things that happened in my past life are things that I disdain mm -hmm. more every day because I realize how bad those things were for me and how without sense I was when I was committing those things, thinking that I was just out there having fun mm -hmm. and, and enjoying it. 
Well, those things come back to bite you. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later. Yeah, and the older you get, the more you realize that. I think a lot of times that that's what he's talking about here. You know, God's uh, word is not put there for us because God is angry or He he's a God that doesn't want us to have fun. That's right. He wants us to live within the guidelines, the basic guidelines of his word for our own sake. Because it's good for us. He's a good father. Yeah, it's good for us. And, and it's good. It. Yes. Right. Going back to this uh, portion of the scripture, I want to quote an excerpt from Barclay's commentary on this. This is what he says. What James is demanding is that these self-satisfied, easygoing, luxury-loving, complacent, unworried hearers of his should be confronted with their sins, and they should be ashamed, grief-stricken, and afraid. For only then could they reach out for grace and go on to a joy far greater than their earthbound pleasures. I thought to myself, he's pretty direct with that. But look how it touches us even today. Yes. The very reason that we're doing these videos mm -hmm. and have started this up is because people can't get out of the houses now. It's, uh, it's not even lawful for us to go in and, and have a gathering of any size mm -hmm. in, a, in a church house for praise and worship right. because of the things that are coming upon the face of this earth. And people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ should be afraid. They should be, yes. Because we're living in a day and time when the signs of the times, which we're talking about is the end times, mm -hmm. uh, coming down to the down to the wire, Jesus Christ is coming back very soon, mm -hmm. and people need to realize this. Right. Uh, and this pestilence today is all about that very thing. We God allows some things to happen so that we'll wake up. Absolutely. Now, Absolutely. There's, a, there's a lot of prayer going on that this... Uh, Pestilence. Pestilence will be stopped in its tracks and that God will be glorified uh, through miraculous works. Well, mm -hmm. God has done this in the past and yes. we need to be praying for this. But we also need to realize that there were other plagues that came upon the face of the earth. And some of those plagues were brought about by things that were done uh, as David numbered the uh, army of Israel mm -hmm. and then a plague uh, was unleashed. Right. And God... Uh, Move David to make a sacrifice mm -hmm. there at the threshing floor of Aaronaw. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Aaronaw said to David, here, let me give you this. Mm -hmm. Take the threshing floor, take the oxen, take everything that you want to uh, make the sacrifice. And David said something. Mm -hmm. He said, I will not sacrifice anything to the Lord that doesn't, that cost, doesn't me. cost me something. Mm -hmm. Well, people, maybe we need to wake up there a little bit and, yeah. and begin to give of ourselves in some way to sacrifice of ourselves whether it be by prayer or by giving or however that maybe this plague may be stayed by the hand of almighty god instead of just worrying about ourselves all the time That's right. you see this is where james is going he's really insisting that these people become aware of the tears and the sorrows and the griefs and the needs of other people. That's right. And he's saying, you know, that ought to pierce our hearts, of, especially when it comes to our own pleasure and comfort, that these people needed to develop a new sensitiveness to the needs of other people. And I think we are in a place today <laughs> with this that that's what we need to think about. Yeah, you think about the, the greedy uh, selfishness of individuals who are out there with Morning. this toilet paper thing. <laughs> I mean, this is becoming a real uh, real situation here. Mm -hmm. I mean, not thinking about anybody. Right. You, I've gone into stores. I've been into Walmart. I've been into Winco. I've been into Costco. I've been into uh, the smaller grocery stores. And, you know, there's no shortage in there mm -hmm. of foods and uh, meats and everything are all kept up until people start going crazy with fear. And hoarding. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's not uh, a lack. That's not a shortage. That is fear-based uh, situations Behavior. 
which people are acting out in greed. Mm -hmm. And we're teaching against this kind of a thing. You know, one of the things that we can do, even to comply with what James says, is to buy not just for our family, but buy for someone else. Yes. And, and to bless, especially older people that are shut in and people with little children. He was actually saying here that we're really not, we don't even act like Christians until we become aware of other people and their needs. Amen. And so it's not always about us. I learned that little acronym with joy many, many years ago. G and we say the J is for Jesus, O is for others, and Y is for yourself. You're last. Yourself last. Yes. It's last. I think that's something that we need to really think about in this day and time, to reach out in ways as believers and not make it all about me and my four and no more. Well, that's what Hebrews tells us. It's time to wake up. Right. Wake up. Look around and see what's what's coming down on the face of this earth. Uh, Luke 21 tells you, you know, there's going to be men whose hearts are going to fail them. them for fear of what they see is coming upon the face of the earth. Exactly. Jesus Christ is not available here to uh, for people out of fear. Right. You know, when we come to him, we come to him. And this brings me to my last point on step four. Humble yourself. Here, James concludes with the, the demand for godly humility. All through the Bible, we see that it's truly the humble person who, who can really know the blessings of God. And only when you realize that your own ignorance can you ask for the guidance of God. When you realize that you and I, we can't cope with life by ourselves. Amen. I don't know what people are doing today without Jesus Christ. When in hiding. The, mostly. You <laughs> right know, now they're right. hiding. You see, we have to learn to kneel before the Lord of all the really good life, and that's God our Father. Yes. And only when we realize our own sin will you realize your need for a Savior and the true forgiveness of God. In life, there's only one basic sin which can be said to be the basis of every other sin, people. And that is the sin of forgetting that you and I are creatures. We're created. And we were created by God. Amen. He's the creator. Thank you, Lord. When we realize our helplessness, we're helpless in this situation. Yes. We find the source in which our helpfulness can only be supplied, and that's in Christ alone. Amen. As long as you're a person who regards yourselves, oh, I'm independent of God, um, you're on your way. Sooner or later, you're going to experience defeat yes. in some way. Why? Because you see, when you depend on God in your life to even face life, every morning you get up to face life, you need not on your own strength, but in God's strength. Then your life is headed not for defeat, but victory. Thank you, Lord. As believers today, we can have victory even with all of this virus. Amen. Because our hope is not in this world. It's in God and God alone. God sees us every day coming to humbly into his presence. We're called upon if my people who are called by my name will repent of their sins and then humble themselves. You see, this is what he's talking about, calling and depending on God for strength and wisdom to overcome any temptation in our life. People, we can't fight this stuff on our own. That's right. God has to look down and see us with, with and not having a self-sufficient spirit, a spirit that totally overlooks him. We mustn't ignore his word or have a spirit that says, I think I can do this on my own. And I'll just ignore God. My point is this. When you're tempted, if you humble yourself in the sight of God, God will lift you up. God will meet the need and give you whatever you need. He'll deliver you from any temptation that the enemy throws in your path. Amen. I think that's wonderful. I, I learned this adage many years ago. The way up is down. That means get on your knees before God and cast your care upon him because he cares for you and he will lift you up in due season. Amen. These are four steps that when temptation comes, 
People and temptation will come and they do work, but you have to be the one to work them. First of all and foremost, he tells you, submit yourself to God and resist the devil. Draw near to God, repent. I always repent every single day of known sin and maybe something that I've offended someone else with and I didn't know it. Repent, then learn to be disciplined and deeply mournfully concerned about your sin and about what's going on in that temptation. None of us want to fall to temptation. No. And then humble yourself. I like the scripture where Jesus said, blessed are the mournful, for they shall be what? Comforted. Learn what your greatest temptations are. Get at the root of them, because at the root of every temptation, there is something that's causing that temptation for you to be tempted in that area. And it's different for each and every one of us. This is how we become what the Bible calls overcomers. Next week, James chapter 4, 11 and 12. Do some studying before we have it so you can be right there with me. And if you have questions, send them in and we will do our level best to answer them for you. Pastor, would you please pray as we close today? If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like for you to join with me in prayer. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd like for you to pray with me as well. But I would like for you to pray and ask God to forgive you of your past life, of your sins, and to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Yes, Jesus. And Lord, we do ask that there will be a miraculous stopping of this In the name of uh, Jesus. pestilence, Lord God, is attacking our world today. Yes, Father. And Father, that you will touch those uh, that are ill this very day. And Father, that you will lift them up from lift the sick up, bed. Strength. Father, by the name of Jesus Christ, we release the kingdom power for yes, healing Lord, for into healing their lives. Strengthen their and bodies, comfort, Lord, Lord God, and lift up. And Lord God, let those who are well today know that you are our covering yes and Lord Jesus. God that you are our provider and our keeper that you will bless us and take care of us Lord God that you know what is going on you yes, are not Father. taken by surprise in, in any of, of this absolutely Lord God we do ask for forgiveness of our sins yes Lord. we accept you as Lord and Savior and Father we want to serve you in such a way that brings glory to your name Whole heart in Jesus name Amen, amen and amen. Now, if you were not uh, a Christian beforehand and you've prayed with us, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. If you have testimonies, please message us. Let us know what's going on in your life. We'll try our best to uh, answer any questions that you have and so on. Now, we invite you to go to our new webpage. Uh, it is www.woodville, W-Z-O-O-D-V-I-L-L-E, aog dot com visit us there you can see videos that we have produced and put on uh, it tells you all about us we also have a a section for giving if you'd like to join us with your giving uh, we would appreciate it if you have not joined our uh, Woodville Assembly of God Church group uh, visit it on uh, Facebook and mm -hmm. and join it we would love to have you it's growing day by day mm -hmm. uh, small in number I think we have about 40 uh, members at this time but we invite you all to become a part of what we're doing on one of the pages on Facebook we serve restoration with Cliff and Linda Woodville Assembly of God Church and Woodville Assembly of God Church group we'll be back again um, before next Wednesday but next Wednesday at 4 p.m. or we will have our Bible study with Pastor Linda. So we'll look forward to being with you then, and I'll be seeing you even before then live on Facebook. God bless you today, and thank you for joining us. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh. Perfect. Just two or three little minutes. What? Did good. Yeah, <sighs> <sighs>